But last night as we were cruising between Mono Lake and Lake Tahoe, uh, it became obvious that while there was no smoke up in the high mountain passes there, there was an insane amount of smoke in the Tahoe Basin area and then also you know, there was smoke from the fire up near Redding and because of that all of the campsites were just completely booked solid of people trying to escape to the areas that didn't have smoke. Most of the areas did so it was proving pretty much impossible to camp or photograph due to the smoke and we kind of knew there was going to be smoke but the conditions just proved to be a lot worse than either of us even expected. We've both lived in California for quite a while and we've never seen smoke this bad ever. And so it was just pretty insane. I mean, there was smoke all the way from the Mojave all the way up to like Lake Tahoe. And so what we ended up deciding to do was to, to cruise down like up over the Sierra down to the coast and now we're in Silicon Valley. So we cruised into Silicon Valley last night around 2 a.m. I uh, just crashed at this hotel and then we're gonna drive today down to Carmel and Monterey area try and explore Point Lobos and Pebble Beach and, and then hit some galleries there in Carmel by the sea, like Ansel Adams, Brett Weston, Christopher Burkett, and some others, uh, all large format film photographers who print in the dark room, which will be pretty cool to see. Uh, and then the plan after that is to go down the coast to Big Sur and hopefully find a campsite, but we're like looking at reservations right now because we don't want to end up in the situation from yesterday because it's just kind of total chaos out here because of those wildfires. So that's the plan. We're just going to improvise and make it work and uh, just kind of enjoy whatever happens uh, as far as the photography goes. We were both saying how like uh, Point Lobos and Pebble Beach and all that stuff are really iconic photography locations with a lot of rich history with some of the great masters of like large format landscape photography. So it'll be cool to explore those locations, um, if nothing else. So we're gonna see what happens as far as the photography, but as far as the road trip, we've definitely gotten to see a lot of California. <laughs> so that's been interesting. So yesterday we stopped at uh, uh, Bishop, and we stopped in Mammoth, and then we stopped up uh, near Mono Lake, and then uh, on the 395 at the cabin there, and then um, up near uh, Lake Tahoe, and. So it's just been really crazy just seeing all the scenery and the, the way the smoke affects it and the places that do have it and don't have it and the contrast between it. So definitely an interesting experience, but uh, we're just going to play it by ear and see how it goes. After getting some morning coffee and breakfast smoothies, we headed south to Carmel by the Sea, an upscale coastal town, to see some of the best photographs in the world at the Photography West Gallery, home to prints by Edward, Brett, and Cole Weston, Ansel Adams, Christopher Burkett, and Roman Laronc. Unfortunately, we weren't able to film in there, and so you'll have to check out the gallery in person if you're ever in the area. It's absolutely worth your time. Arriving at Point Lobos State Reserve, we parked down the street due to the full parking areas and then made the short hike down the trail to Weston Beach, an aptly named spot for the photographs we were there to create. Believe it or not, the reason that I came out here today to Point Lobos is that I've really been inspired by some large format work done by Edward Weston and um, some of the, the great large format landscape photographers. And the stuff they're photographing is not these grand ocean vistas, but instead it's just these uh, kind of tiny intimate scenes of these cracks and formations and patterns in the sandstone on the cliffs. I think 8x10 film is one of the best um, mediums for that because it captures just an absolutely tremendous amount of detail. And so that's what I'm trying to do here today. Uh, we got some sea lions over here. Uh, we got the place, this little area all to myself and I've just been trying to expose some film here. Now because the sun is high in the sky, I am shooting black and white film and this is Arista 100. And I used it at a slow shutter speed, but it was one, si one half of a second at um, f64 and when you're shooting large format a lot of times you're using these really narrow apertures in order to get everything in focus especially this close to the camera and so um, that means that i was using a slower shutter speed which is uh, one half of a second so hopefully it comes out i put about a half an hour or more of work into this composition just tweaking it checking the focus and everything and um, i think it'll turn out so we'll see Somewhere between loading and developing this sheet of film, something went terribly wrong. 
I still have no idea what, when, or how. Working with large format can be both incredibly frustrating and incredibly rewarding. This time, it was the former. Fortunately, with the next exposure, it would be the latter, where I'd be able to create exactly what I'd set out to accomplish. So right now I just set up this other composition here on these rocks and uh, there's just these really dramatic gashes in the stone here that make it look like a giant dinosaur just came and just clawed up the, the ground with his claws. And it's just really, um, really dramatic and sort of ominous looking. So I've set the uh, 8x10 camera up right here on this ledge overlooking the rock formations. And I had used just a little bit of front tilt to get the, um, the focus plane to follow the rock. And the gashes will sweep dramatically down into the frame top to bottom. And uh, we've just got a lot of little interesting pox and um, ripples and dots and stuff in the stone here, which should just make for a lot of visual interest. In fact, the tonality of this scene actually looks so good, I might be tempted to shoot it on Velvia later on in the evening. Right now, the light is a little bit harsh, so it probably won't come out too well because the dynamic range will be too much for Velvia. Or at least it'll just look harsh. The light won't look very attractive. But I think maybe in a little bit, this might actually work on Velvia. I don't know, we'll see. But for now, I've got two black and white eight by 10 exposures uh, for the day here in Point Lobos. Both of these sort of uh, stone patterns and textures, which are sort of iconic of this um, coastal location here in uh, Point Lobos Natural uh, Preserve here in California. So we're gonna see, I'm probably gonna have to wait for the light to get a little bit better before I make any more exposures. And uh, all I've got left with me right now is Velvia. So I have to wait for the light to get good. And then I've got a composition out that way, looking out to see which might work. And then I've also got some of these interesting light falling across these uh, rocks here that might also work. Um, I was gonna try a, a composition uh, on some of these trees over here, uh, um, beh over uh, behind me, but uh, it turned out that you couldn't really get enough compression with the focal lengths available uh, with large format. So uh, we're gonna have to stick to these closer up scenes and sort of the grand vistas. But uh, overall, I think I'll be happy if these turn out and maybe we get some uh, more uh, images tonight. So we'll see what happens. Titling this new image, Jurassic, after the dinosaur claw-like impressions in the sandstone. This image achieves exactly what I came to Point Lobos to do, to create an abstract black and white image of the unique sandstone patterns here, as a tribute to the famous photography of Edward Weston created here over half a century ago. This proved to be the last exposure of the day as the park closed at 6 p.m. due to state budget cutbacks and we were forced to leave just before the evening light of sunset got good. However, on day three, I'd get to make some new images at one of my favorite spots. You'll have to stick around for that video to find out where, as it's the best of the bunch. I'm Justin Lowry, thanks for watching, and until next time, stay curious.